Well, thank you very, very much. I would like to make a comment uh, or respond to all of you. And I would like to have the commission, and I'll make the motion if I'm allowed, uh, <laughs> I'll pass a gavel, You're but I will um, I would like to, for somebody to make the motion to ask our city attorney to look into enforcement actions against FPNL. It is, I think, a disgrace that our infrastructure has deteriorated to the point that it has. I think that it is a disgrace that they have not kept up with us and, and with the needs for Coral Gables. And I hear comments about you know, north of A Street, no, um, no trucks, north of A Street, Algardi, uh, other, other streets. And I think that I would like to have the commission instruct our city attorney to look into enforcement actions against FBNL. Do I have a second to that motion? Thank you. Do we have All a those second? in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Commissioner I'd Casada? Like to, Commissioner Casada. Uh, oh, second. He, he wanted to second it. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, so it's clear. Can be a second. I wanted to. All in favor? Aye. Can I just say, what, are you done? Just a couple of words. Yes. Um, in, in this I'm sorry. That, that passed. Right? Yes. yes. Go yes. ahead. And this is to FBNL and Charles Knight. And, you know, I know that you are only an employer, but the employee that's um, here to, to, to listen to what we have to say. But I ask you sincerely to go back to the people that run FPNL and and tell them that we are tired of being dependent on a monopoly for power in this state that is not, that does not, in a public service commission, that does not force FPNL to... Um, to behave or to have the, the policies and procedures in place to ensure that when there is problems along this line, the, along our lines and our grid that they are taking care of. Mrs. Fuller came and showed you a picture of a transformer that's buried in a tree. How do you not go out and fix that? How do you not go out and fix that? Somebody has to have told you. Somebody has gone out numerous times to fix that electricity. And you know what? The damn transformer still stays in the tree. The entrance to Gables Estates. Mm -hmm. it, the same thing. 5601 thing. Granada. Yeah. I mean, these are problems that you deal with on a regular basis. Where is your quality control? Where are your processes? Where are your people? Where are your systems? You spent millions of dollars to defeat um, solar. the solar bill. Millions of dollars to try and defeat the solar bill that thankfully passed. You weren't successful. Take those millions of dollars and put them back into your company and, and run a company that doesn't run as a monopoly and is answerable to no one. If, Thank you, Vice and, Mayor. And, uh, Commissioner Lago? Uh, commission, I'm sorry. Uh, Commissioner, may I say Commissioner Casada just uh, yeah. texted me? He wants to make sure that FPL understands how much people suffer when we don't get a reasonable price from FPL for undergrounding. Yeah. So, so he joins th you that's in what your I wanted concept to, on that's undergrounding, what I'm, sir. I'm happy, that, I'm happy that Commissioner Casada made those comments because I've, I've been giving a lot of thought lately and I, and, um, I think the mayor's comments and the vice mayor's comments were strong enough in reference to FPNL. My comments are going to be more geared towards everybody here knows that I have solar in my house and the benefits of solar and what this city has done uh, to make solar as easy as possible to attain in South Florida. I think we are the premier city when it comes to uh, allowing people to have solar in their house. I mean, we've removed all permit fees for solar. We've expedited all permits in relations to, uh, to solar. But we still have the big giant FPNL fighting us every step that we can. That can so, FPNL shut down your solar? Well, right now, I mean, yeah. Right now, I don't. Right now, I don't have. I don't have uh, electricity because I don't have the backup battery yet, which has been, which has been, which hasn't been allowed to uh, be sold in the state of Florida yet. Um, there's a lot of legal wrangling, okay. and there's yeah. a lot of you know lobbying well, efforts going on. Up. Just, just like, just like with the, with just like with the tiles. The solar tiles from Tesla, it's the same situation. They haven't been able to get the approvals in the state of Florida. I don't want to get into hypothetical reasons, or, but, but, but we all know why a lot of things are occurring. I really think that we as a city, we as a commission, we need to pass a resolution today. And that resolution has to be one that asks 
our staff and gives our city manager the latitude to hire an, outs an outside consultant to look at undergrounding our existing lines. I have been doing some research over the last few days. Again, I have nothing else to do. Uh, so during that time, I've been doing a little research with the help of Martha, and we've, we found out that there are a few cities that have undergrounded their lines already in Miami-Dade County. I have a resolution from North Bay Village. I know it's a small community, but they did it. Uh, we also have you know, different, different articles of, of municipalities in, in Miami-Dade County, in Broward, uh, which have taken those steps, like Coconut Creek. Again, undergrounding the lines is an essential part of our future. We need to upgrade our infrastructure. Um, like the mayor mentioned in the beginning, FPNL received a 23% rate hike approval over the next four years. Where's all that money? Where's all that money going to go? Are they going to increase infrastructure? I mean, I know they're increasing, obviously, profits. But if we're going to be held accountable as elected officials, we need to hold FPNL accountable. And that's the bottom line. Because when I receive a phone call, when I receive a phone call, and I know that every single person on this commission has received them, when I receive a phone call from an elderly 103-year-old woman who hasn't had electricity and is living in heat. Oxygen, uh, yeah. And her issue is oxygen for five days, and I visit her, you know, my heart breaks that I can't resolve her issue for her. We're all, I mean, who, who doesn't feel you know, broken when you, when you reach out to somebody and they have an issue that you can't resolve and it's all out of your, it's basically out of your hands. No matter how powerful you are or the elected official that you are, you have no power at this instance. Will you make a motion? So I'd like to make a motion to, to uh, have the manager and staff do the necessary research, hire an outside consultant so we can get a real grasp and an understanding of what is the undergrounding cost. In the other cities that have done this, it's been paid three ways. Oh, I want to be you very. You have a second already, sir. Okay, I want to be. On, I want to be up front. <laughs> I want to be up front because every person that I visited over the last few days in their homes, they've all asked me the same thing. Hey, what's up with undergrounding? Can we do it? There's a cost that will be will be borne to the residents. Okay, let's be honest. To the city, and FPNL will pay a portion. And I agree with you a hundred percent. And. The motion has been made and, and seconded um, by Commissioner Casala. Yes, seconded by Commissioner Casala. Will you call the roll, please? Commissioner Lago? Yes. Commissioner Mena? Yes. Commissioner Casada? He says yes. yes. <laughs> Vice Mayor Kian? Yes. Mayor Valdez Valdez. Resoundingly yes. Can I say I would like I would like to make a comment on that. Please. And I'm glad that we passed that motion. But even without undergrounding, their level of support for our existing Distribution network. Our existing lines yeah. is has been pathetic. Can I can I give you can I give you one more example? There is and I, and I wish Chelsea was here because she's out of town and maybe Martha remembers her name. There's a resident in the city and I, maybe her staff knows that there, that her power goes out. She lives next to Venetian Pool. Her power goes out every month for like two or three days at a time. I mean that, that's that's unacceptable. That's unacceptable. But I mean we can talk about those those examples for for days. I want to just say thank you to two different entities and one person who have really come to bat for the city. Uh, I want to thank Lyft, and if, if you're listening today, the residents or anybody, uh, Lyft came through where if you need uh, transportation anywhere in the city of Coral Gables, they'll pay for it. It's complimentary, so we want to give thanks to Lyft. I also want to thank Commissioner Rebecca Sosa, who will be donating 200 bags of ice tomorrow. Uh, she'll be providing uh, the logistics for that, and you know maybe some of my commissioners can help me, and we'll hand those out to people who are in need. Uh, especially in the North Gable, so thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, one point before we continue. Uh, you had directed before the meeting, based on your emergency powers, that Commissioner Casada could participate by phone. Yes, of I course. I want to be clear for the record, but it would be useful uh, to ratify that by the commission with a motion second and a yes, vote is of the is there a motion second. second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Commissioner Mena, you have the last word. I'd, I'll be brief because I think we've covered uh, <laughs> just about every aspect of this. I just want to make a note that we've had a lot of residents uh, from the North Cables area. Uh, I live a block from Sunset. I don't have power either. People in Old Cutler Bay, Gables Estates, they don't have power either. People that live near the University of Miami, mm -hmm. they didn't have power until I think this morning. This morning. Uh, oh, and by the way, and by the way, can I interrupt you one second, Commissioner? <laughs> just to make it even worse, to exacerbate the situation, I have two young girls. I didn't have power on Friday. We were the first, we were the first residents in Coral Gables to lose power. I know, along, along with, with uh, Maria, who lives a block away from me. So it's been, it's been a while. It's been, you know, across the city, 
uh, condos, houses, you name it. There's oh, not really any exception. He says he doesn't have to, power either. Uh, Commissioner Casada doesn't have power either. So we're all frustrated. We all share your frustration, I assure you. Um, and we're working as hard as we can to, to, to try to get this resolved however possible. Uh, I think there's two aspects to that. I think there's dealing with what we're dealing with right now. But I think it's important that when we're done dealing with what we're dealing with right now, that we really take an introspective look at how all of this went and see how we can improve going forward. I think Mr. Munoz said earlier, uh, uh, made that note earlier, it's important for us to not forget about these issues so that we're not in the same position, God forbid, a month from now, but a year from now or two years from now or whenever it is. Uh, so, you know, thank you all for your participation. Uh, one last note, uh, you know, I, there was a comment made by a gentleman earlier, Mr. Diaz Padron, about the city's efforts on social media. Uh, you know, I don't know how it was on Twitter or not, but I can tell you that on all other forms of, of media, emails, Facebook. Uh, there's been a lot of information proliferated as best we can. We're always open to additional ways to do that. It's hard when people don't have power. Uh, but, but to the extent you don't, I really, I really encourage you to follow us on all forms of social media because our staff has done a really good job of, I think, posting on Facebook in particular, Twitter, uh, Twitter, Twitter et cetera. Uh, we can always do better. Always, but, but please make sure you follow us because there's a lot of helpful information on there that you might not otherwise be aware of uh, during a situation like this. Can Thank you very much, Commissioner Mena.